everyone, and welcome to Real Estate Real Laughs. I'm Valerie Fitzgerald. And I'm Bob Hurwitz. We want to thank our listeners from all over the world for tuning in to hear us each week. We love sharing interesting stories and people and the things behind the real estate curtain. So listen carefully to our very special guest today, Shervin Rupavar. In fact, Sherwin is an entrepreneur in the tech space and many, many startups, and also known as a real handsome guy in that popular show called Shaws of Sunset. So Sherwin, welcome to our show. Hey, thank you so much for having me, Valerie. I'm so excited to be here. Um, I consider it an honor, and I know we, we kind of share that past together, so it's, it's you know, very few and far and few come in between to understand what the world's like. So it's good to have somebody else kind of get where I'm coming from. So yeah, the reality you. TV space, right? That's a space. Yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's a phone world for sure. Yeah, Sherman, uh, welcome. It's a pleasure. And just to give you a quick heads up. So this is literally behind the curtain, under the covers, you know, there's no boundaries and look forward to hearing some of your stories. Well, if you've ever seen these Trials of Sunset, don't ever tell any of us there's no boundaries because... <laughs> That's a bad idea. But, you know, I'll, I'll assume my own. Thank you. I appreciate it. Hey, Bob, it was great to meet you. I know we spoke a little bit before it started. And, you know, to, to know that you spear your own fish while diving. <laughs> yeah. Good to see you. Cool. All right, Valerie, let's, let's get them rolling. I'm sure Shervin has some good stuff. So, yeah. So, so give us an idea of kind of, kind of some of the experiences through whether it's real estate or the, your business life, entrepreneurship, things that you've done, because we all run into some crazy, strange people, stories, all kinds of things. And we'd love to share some with you. Well, that we do. Um, you know, like you mentioned, I'm a serial entrepreneur. That's the best way I can describe it. You know, well, one of the hardest questions for me to answer is, uh, what do you do for a living? <laughs> because I start to explain and then I start to notice they doze off and they fall asleep and I'm not done. And there's quite a few more to go. <laughs> so the best way to say it, in a nutshell, is I'm a serial entrepreneur. I've, um, I love business. I've been involved in many ways. And actually the way myself and Valerie met was through a mutual friend, Marvin, amazing guy, um, but one of my very, very close friends. And we actually spoke on the same panel at Harvard and we spoke on success and entrepreneurialism. So like myself, he's also very business oriented. And um, in being so, you experience a little bit of everything. So, you know, I've experienced many, many, many businesses, but I know today we're focused real estate wise. My real estate experiences back in 2000, well, actually funny story, 2001, I was in college and I'd started a computer company. I run into some, some buddies I knew and I went to college in, in Southern California. I run some buddies I know from Northern California. And I was at this bar and they showed up in Ferraris and Bentleys. I'm like, what's going on? I might, did I miss something? Right. So they're like, yeah, man, we're in the mortgage game. You got to get involved in this thing. I'm like, well, what do you mean? I like, come to my office tomorrow. And I go to his office tomorrow. It was in Newport Beach. And literally when you open the, the window, you have to close it because the sand would come in. So I'm like, this is an amazing office. Like, what are you guys exactly doing? Like, we're doing mortgage. It's amazing. I tell my dad, I'm like, hey, dad. And he's always been like my mentor, like kind of led the way, and especially when it comes to business. Right. I say, hey, dad, what's up with this mortgage thing? Should I get involved? He's like, no, my son, this is something like, it's like, if you're a plumber, your son's a plumber. You can't just jump into an industry like this. I'm like, I don't know. These guys are doing it. So I slept on it and I didn't. 2006, I had enough. Everybody was just killing it. So I jumped in too. And Unfortunately, uh, later we come to find out that that was a major factor in, in the, the fall of the economy. Not to say I was or my friends were, but the industry as a whole. The so, timing of it, you mean the 2007-2008 debacle? Yeah. When the world was falling apart, right? That's, that's kind of, and this was kind of the, uh, as Bob would know, the spear that, that killed it, right? right. right. <laughs> so, so that's what happened. That was my, my very first experience in real estate. And during the process, I had to get my real estate license. And back then, you didn't have to have a different mortgage license than a real estate license, just that all real estate license. It was much more general. Right. So we saw quite a few things. I mean, I would work day and night, and it was like I, I'd be there till 
9, 10 o'clock at night in my office. Then I would go to the gym. At the time, I was 24-hour fitness, and like its name, it was open 24 hours. Right. So I would work out, and then I would come home, being a single guy living by myself. I'd go to the grocery store and just pick up whatever I wanted for that day to eat for dinner. Mind you, dinner is now going to be at midnight, but hey, better something than nothing. <laughs> so while I'm there, at that time, there would always be one checker and one bagger. And the bagger was this older Hispanic gentleman. Barely spoke English. And one day they asked me, they go, what exactly is it that you do? I'm like, well, this is what I do. You know, I do mortgage. I help people get into homes. And the bagger says, I would love to own my home one day. I'll get you on. <laughs> yeah. like, Are you serious? I said, yeah. And back then it was open rain. I yeah. mean, the banks, it wasn't me. All I did was I was just the connector between the, the borrower and the lender. It was the lender that was giving the money out and the lender was just giving everybody. Sure. Fast forward four months, this guy owns four houses. Whoa. And so he's just, he's getting these houses and he keeps borrowing against them. I stopped him and I'm like, hey man, you're like really maxing it out to the max. You should take it easy. He's like, no, no, I could buy another one. I could buy another one. Well, lo and behold, we all know what happened and the whole thing kind of. Yeah. Like, um, so I have a question. Without, when you first saw those guys with the beach and the, the, the really cool vibey office and the fancy cars and all that, was that seductive to you? Did that make you feel like, what, a great life I could have? Great question, because 50% of me was, it was very seductive, it was very attractive. It was magnetic. I wanted it. This is amazing, right? But then the other 50% told myself, like, these guys are lying. They're selling drugs. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> it was just too good to be true. It didn't make sense. Right. right. And, uh, and as we push forward, though, that was the case. And it was, and I say this oftentimes to friends and family, like, you guys don't understand. At that time, it was like money was raining from the sky. Like, you couldn't not make money. It was, it was dumb. I mean, we used to call our parking lot Skittles because it was just different colored cars of exotic cars. And, you know, three months ago, that guy was a salesman at Honda, and that one was a salesman at Fry's. Like, that's what it was. Right. So, you know, when two plus two doesn't equal four, you start to raise question marks. I would suggest to my team, I'd say, please save your money, please. This is not something that's gonna last forever. Right. Yeah, it was pretty, it was pretty amazing then because like you said, some of the richest friends that I had, um, they were in the mortgage business. That's what they were, it was just unbelievable, you know, driving Rolls Royces and everything else. And and they weren't like geniuses, but good salesmen. Um but, saying you nicely, Bob. Yeah, <laughs> but um, it, it was pretty amazing. So like you said, it, it just was kind of freewheeling and just roll the dice and make, you're just making money. Definitely. Well, you know, the market took its, its uh, inevitable, unfortunate turn. And we all kind of picked up our pieces and tried to survive. Um, thank God, knock on wood. I had other business endeavors going on. I had other forms of revenue. I did okay. And I stayed afloat. Uh, a lot of people did. Right. And during that time, I kind of saved up and I kind of went back to focus back into the tech industry where I came from. And after that, I started investing in real estate. So that was very interesting in itself because after the crash and after all the foreclosures and short sales were all there, it was like you were picking up properties, but they looked like they had been destroyed, pulverized. I mean, the people had stripped out the copper pipes out of the walls to sell them right. to people. Like it was, it was a shell, you know? You were lucky if 80% of the studs were there, right? <laughs> yeah. It was, I mean, what, what are you guys selling the studs for? Are you, are you selling them for firewood at this point? Like, I don't get it. Right. So, you know, we went through that. And, and during that time, I started investing in properties. You know, I would say this, I say, wealth is never made in a good economy. It's made in a bad economy. So when, when it does tank and when it does adjust and it, it is cyclic and it will happen, and it is inevitable. Not that I want it to, but that's the reality. I mean, I love sunny days. I don't want it to be night, but it will be night. Today where we're at, it's almost five o'clock and it's about to be night, right? Right. So yeah. nothing we can do to stop it. Um, but yeah, you know, during that time, I always say, be ready, be ready, be focused, be liquid and be ready to look after your buy opportunities. So I did that. And I started buying condos and that's how they came. I mean, stripped out. And you're buying them on the courtroom steps. 
right? Because these foreclosures are happening, they're auctioning them, you gotta pay cash, you've never seen it. You may have seen a few pictures which were heavily angled. Right. And you know, you you got this good grab bag, the surprise. Now you got a headache you have to deal with. So you, talk, you know, you mentioned two things that, that um, really strike home. And the thing where foreclosed properties, it's not even a question a lot of times where the person is trying to get money for what they're taking out of it. It's because they're upset and it's a way of getting even by, by stripping the place. Um, I, I've had that happen before. I don't know whether that was happening with you. But the other thing that you mentioned that is really key is and is relative to real estate is the fact that so many people when the market's hot, it's driven by psychology, you know, as much as it is by economics. And people will, they'll buy when the market's really hot and pay top dollar when in actuality, they should be buying when the market's bad. But they don't want to do it because other people aren't doing it. So it's kind of this counterintuitive, intelligent way to invest in the way you, you are doing, you know. Well, basically. you know, that's, you know, there's a right way to do things. And there's a way we naturally do, right? So FOMO kicks in, Bob. Fear of missing out. Right, and you true. have no choice. Sure. It's like everybody's making money in this. I, I have to as well. I'm not going to lie. Crypto is like that right now. Right. right. Like I don't understand it. It doesn't make sense to me. I've, I've not been a proponent towards crypto at any point. But in full disclosure, I started buying some crypto because everybody's making money. And even if it doesn't make sense, I'm not going to miss the boat. That's right. right. Yeah. You know, you, you can't, it just doesn't make sense. So what happened then was like, everybody, nobody anticipated or expected the very common sense of property can also go down, right? Everybody's just thinking it's going up, you can only go up. That's what's happening right now with crypto, by the way. Yeah. So- it Also happening with real estate. And real estate, exactly. Yeah. So, you know, I, I am, I'm a huge believer that there's an adjustment coming. Uh, I think that this in, this hyperinflation is only further propelling it, and that's what we're going to see. So I'm doing my due diligence to kind of do my homework, prepare, and, and set up for it. And don't get me wrong, I still get my FOMO, but now I'm a little older and I can kind of hold it back. Right. <laughs> well, you know, it, it's funny. I'm going to give you guys a tip right now. Um, so I don't know anything about crypto either. I don't understand it, the algorithms and whatever, but... I told my kid, I gave him some money. I said, hey, buy, he was buying crypto. I said, buy, buy some crypto. Not enough money is going to change you know, my life or anything. Yeah. And I got into 13 and I sold it at um, 53, and, which was great. And then I said, okay, I want to get into this really like crazy, you know, and we're going to skyrocket the, the crazy stuff like Dogecoin or whatever. Yeah. And bottom line is I had sold all my Bitcoin and there's a guy that was renting on the beach next door to me who's a commercial um, documentary make, uh, filmmaker and I was talking about crypto to this other guy in front of his house and it turns out this guy had three miners for Bitcoins in the 90s. He has tons of Bitcoin at 50 bucks and he and he's used to give it to bit, he used to give it to friends. And so as soon as we saw who he was we go hey what's you know give us a tip because I don't really have a tip. But we got to be really friendly, me and him, because he was renting for a month next door to me. And he said, you know what, Bob, if you buy Bitcoin now, if it doesn't double by January, I'll pay you the difference. He's a really rich guy. I go, really? I'd love to meet this guy, by the way. He's a <laughs> trip. He's so smart. He understands the whole algorithm, how it, it counts down. You can only, you know, mine, you know, half the amount of Bitcoin or Bitcoin the next year. So I bought it back at 43 and now it's at 65. He says it'll be 100 by January. So anybody listening to the podcast? Today, Bob. What is it today? 59. Okay, but it's going up to 100 by January. It will. You know what? I honestly believe it'll hit 100 by January. Yeah. Valerie, like, jump on it with some of your millions. Well, yeah, right. No, I've been, I've been studying it. I've been, I've been trying to learn about Bitcoin myself. But yeah. you know, I'm curious about something, Shervin. With all the tech businesses and the entrepreneur businesses and the investments and the mortgage and and you know being on the show i guess you got back in some real doing involved in some real estate deals you know being involved part of uh, shars the sunset are, are there three are there three most memorable moments in your life that stand out that you'd want to share with our listeners well you know real estate related interesting question because it spans for so long, right? I mean, we're 2021, I'm giving you examples, you know, original ones with the, the gentleman at the grocery store, that was 2006. So Great story. 15 years, that would be one. But since then I did some investments and I've had some very interesting ones. Um, I guess the second one would be, I started buying up these condos and uh, fixing them up and renting them out. 
And uh, one night I get a bunch of phone calls in the middle of the night, like 4.30 in the morning. And the condos, by the way, these ones specifically I'm speaking about are in Las Vegas. And I answered the phone and it's this detective from Las Vegas Metro. And he said, you know, I'm a detective and he said, I work for Homicide. Oh. <laughs> That's not a call you want to get it for. Yeah, right. I, right. I, I, I almost had to pinch myself. In my <laughs> way, right. So he said, uh, basically, long story short, this guy that was living in your condo has now committed, allegedly committed murder, and we're investigating this, and oh. we know your relationship with him. You need to come to Las Vegas. Okay, yeah, man, <laughs> you know, I got a film tomorrow. What do you mean? <laughs> I have a lease, like I'll send it to you. I got checks, I got receipts, I got photocopies. You know, I've, I've done nothing, you know, and- you, you know, I've done nothing. <laughs> I, I, don't know, I don't know what you want me to do, right? Uh, you know, it's not, not every night you go to sleep thinking uh, in the middle of the night you're gonna be woken up with as a potential suspect for murder. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, he quickly understood. He's like, okay, we didn't get it. We thought there was a personal relationship. If you can send over these documents. I said, I'll send over send over the checks. I was like, I'll send over the checks. I'll send over my bank statements. I'll send over screenshots. I'll give you access to my bank, whatever you want. You know, like, I don't want to get arrested for murder here. I'm a public figure at this point. That's not going to be <laughs> Even without, if you're not a public figure, you don't want to be arrested for murder. Yeah, so, uh, you know, and I'm not going to lie. There was a good 10, 12% of me that was like, this is a bad business. Sell everything. <laughs> right. <laughs> like I right. I mean, you know, there's, Certain things you do, just, you know, it's ROI, risk and reward. I never knew this was a risk I was signing up for, right? Yeah. Get your murder case? No, I'm good. So um, that was definitely the second one. And the third one, so now I'm in my involvement in real estate, aside from being an investor, is a couple of years ago, I started a construction company. So I do construction. It's called Sturdy Builds. Oh, okay. Um, nice. And, uh, and it's uh, what we focus in is on multi-unit properties. So apartment buildings. I mean, I would love to say I built these high rises that you know are 300 units. Not there quite yet. Maybe one day. Hopefully soon. Um, but you know, four unit, eight unit, ten unit, twelve unit, twenty unit. Uh, I do restoration. I do fire restoration. I do additions. I can do ground up builds. These are things I'm doing. So. One of the big things that's changed, I mean, I think, honestly, I'm sure you guys know, you guys are professionals, is there's two main laws that have come about the past year and a half. And these two, I consider the biggest game changers in real estate in history. I think we're going to look back 100 years from now and say that was a pivotal point. So one is the ADU law. Yeah. So I know you're very familiar with the ADU law, but then in January 1st, 2020, the ADU multi-unit ADU law came out. Mm. And it didn't grab a whole lot of steam because we were smack dab in the middle of COVID. And now that it's picking up, what people are doing is they're converting on new space into other units, right? To, to help solve or assist solving the, the housing crisis in, in California. Mm -hmm. You have like laundry rooms converting to units, you have under, tuck under parking converting to units. That's what I do, right? Okay. And in doing so, you know, everything is kind of case by case. It might be like a little corner storage closet that a janitor used to use. Let's make it a unit, right? And I'm next to the laundry room, so we can shave off some laundry room square footage. And this now we can make a four or 500 square foot studio apartment. So they're, because they're case by case, we kind of have to, you know, get in there. It might be on the bottom floor. There might be, you know, a retaining wall that might have some dirt on the other side. It might be sub, sub level. Like, you know, you have some moisture, you have all kinds of issues. So we come to inspect one to make a bid. And right as we're going in, the maintenance guy said, oh, by the way, one of the neighbors lost his pet snake. <laughs> so we're about to go to their crawl space. So hold on, hold on. Where, where's this pet snake? We don't know. How long did you lose him? yesterday how big is a snake <laughs> yeah five and a half feet i don't know if i want to crawl under there right so yeah. i grab my buddy i go why don't you go first <laughs> yeah. of course i'm gonna say that does it bite he goes no but it could constrict okay well that's again something i don't <laughs> want to sign up for right? why would you have this to begin with i don't know exactly it's your right. pet now, i'm not a big you know not to offend anybody that is, 
personally, it's just not my flavor. I'm not a big red pop fan. Right? Right. <laughs> you know, I had a Pomerini, like, you know, for me. Right? Yeah. So yeah. anyway, uh, we went under there. And of course, I didn't let him go by himself. And I kind of crawled behind him and we got our little flashlights. And lo and behold, guess who's down there? Ah. Rocky the snake, right? <laughs> So as soon as I saw him, I started tapping his leg and like pull out, pull out, and we yanked back out. Um, long story short, we called animal control and they came and they actually helped rescue the snake. And the snake, so everybody knows, is back good and healthy with its owner. So everybody got reunited. But in the meanwhile, I think we had um, we had a not so comfortable moment between us and the snake. Yeah, uh, I so would say so. Working, and it wasn't that happy to see us. It is weird. It's a weird vibe people that have snakes. So what do you do? You just like feed them like living things. It doesn't seem like a real enjoyable interaction. You know, you know again, like, you know, you get a puppy, it, it fetches, you know, it cuddles next to you. you know, <laughs> um, like, yeah. It's nice and soft. I don't know what to say. Like, yeah. hey, teach their own. Teach their own. So some people have goldfish and they love it. You can't really pet them either. So I get it, you know, teach their own. <laughs> Yeah, I got, I got, I have a question because I'm totally ignorant about um, the, the uh, Shahs of Sunset or these, these real, um, you know, reality shows, reality shows, right. So what, was there any really interesting things? We had actually um, Davina Potratz from Selling Sunset on. What, was there anything really interesting on the show that you can share that was like, I assume you have, the show was real estate related. Yeah, do you have 10 to 12 hours? Because I mean, <laughs> I did a laundry list of them. I mean, we, you know, Valerie knows part of the show, we travel. So, you know, you've got an, a very nice way I'm saying it, eclectic group of individuals. Right. Literally travel internationally. I mean, we, we had to go to, uh, or not, we had to, we went to Thailand for filming one year. And at the time, I guess there was some kind of like civil war. <laughs> yeah, there's always a coup going on there. Right? So they're like, um, you guys can't really go to Bangkok. The network was like, hey, insurance not going to cover you. You can't go. Right. So we said, okay, we'll go to Phuket. Well, the insurance wouldn't cover us to normally you go, you have one way flights from LA to Thailand, then you hop to Phuket. Right. Well, because we can't even touch Thailand, so insurance doesn't cover it, we had to go the roundabout. So we flew to Seoul, South Korea, and we had a 17 and a half hour layaway in Seoul, South Korea. Wow which you think like 17 and a half hours, but that's just how it worked out. And then we flew to Phuket. Well, during the 17 and a half hours, you've got, again, a very eclectic group that has started drinking in the lounge before while everybody's waiting up in LAX. And they definitely drank their way through the flight. <laughs> and to the point where I think the stewardess at some point said, we have no more tequila on the flight. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they were lying, but I'm happy. <laughs> yeah, 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 right. If you're out there listening, thank God for your life. Um, but we landed and it kept going and, you know, Seoul, the Seoul International Airport is so huge. It has, an, it has a hotel in the airport. Mm. So we had rooms and we went into the lounge at some point. And uh, yeah, I think we're probably one of the very few people, few, a very short list of people that have been ejected in 86 from the uh, lounge at the Seoul Airport. <laughs> <laughs> Long story short, if I have to go to Seoul, I can't go to the lounge. Yeah, right, exactly. We've had quite a few stories like that. I mean, we've, we've experienced some, some very interesting things. You know, I, I wouldn't knock any of it. I would never change my decision ever if I was given it to it again and again and again. Uh, the experience came with its pros and cons like everything else. Sure. But, you know, very few people on earth are, are given the opportunity and I'm very happy I got one. I'm grateful and, and I've enjoyed every moment of it. Right. Sherman, we've loved having you on our show today. Stories to share. and Definitely. I can tell that Sherman, we've, we've barely touched the surface and mined his plethora of stories. So he, we got to get him back. <laughs> yeah, there, there's quite a few. So uh, Sherman, yeah. if people want to reach you, what's the best way for them to find you? So I'm on Instagram. My, my hashtag is at Alpha Sher. I'm, I have somewhat of an alpha personality, so it, it fits me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm at Alpha Sherv on, on Instagram, and uh, and I'd love to I'd love to hear from people. I'd love to hear about how they think about the podcast, what they learn, and you know this is a, a great source of information and knowledge and in a very fun way. So I appreciate you guys for putting it on. Thank you so much for having me. Well, listeners will always bring you fun people and stories, and a few laughs. So let's meet up again next week, and you never know what'll happen next. 
So share your stories with us if you'd like on realestaterealapse.com. Uh, this is Real Estate Real Apps. Join us next week. See you guys. Have a great one. Ciao.